this is a basic function and again this is just showing you how what you've previously done which is just take just written a body of code how that can be turned into a function but now i want to show you um when you start to write a function you the best functions the best way to write a function is to make the function as flexible as possible for the user who wants to use it so normally and i will show you an example of that as well you would import for example a library or a module and you want that module to not be restricted restrictive so for example in this case we calculated 80 content but not everybody who's going to work with dna is going to for example work with insects and for insects we normally try to calculate the 80 content because their 80 content is higher i for example work with uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis so to me the gc content may be more important because in mtb the gc is normally higher or if you're working with extreme files like thermophilic bacteria that have a high gc content you might want to calculate what the gc content is or if you're doing any sequencing you might want to know if there is a 25 percent more or less proportion of of gcs so that you know that there isn't some sequencing error happening because it should be um, more or less split um, in terms of dinucleotides they should be 25 percent each um, so you'd want to optimize this for example so that let's say the user wants to not calculate the AT content but the gc content and that, that's where the arguments come into play so i just want to give you an idea before we had this part over here and we had it as only like that as dna so when you start to add flexibility to your function you start adding it usually through arguments so you add additional arguments so here the only thing i've changed here is so the only thing i changed from the the one that we had before um and i can copy it so that you can compare the two i'm just going to split this so that you can see the difference so so yeah you had you could only add dna and this function would automatically calculate the A content and the T content because this was a function to calculate A T content. But like I said, I want the user to determine whether they want to calculate T T content, A T content, G C content, whatever they want to do. So I've added two additional arguments to this. There's the new, the normal one. I've allowed the user to specify what the first nucleotide is that they want to calculate the, eight, the content for, and the user will specify the second one for which they want to calculate the AT content for. Then this part is exactly the same. It might look a bit confusing, but it's not. This is the DNA.count that we used here, up here. And here, instead of making it strictly A, we are saying count it for the first nucleotide, which is what the user will give. So now you've got a variable name in here that's going to be whatever the user is giving. And I've just put that into a variable name called first nucleotide. And then I do the same. This is the second argument that the user will give. So I add second nucleotide and I go DNA.count for that, which is exactly what we did here. And I store that into another variable. And then I do exactly the same that we did here. I add up the first nucleotide and the second nucleotide and I divide it by the length, length, which I've, um, in this case here, typed out as a separate line. And then I return 80 content. Now note, I've also changed the name of the function to make it intuitive. So this function is now called nucleotide content. You could make it calculate two nucleotides. Uh, or dinucleotide, whatever is intuitive for you. And again, um, this is the function. I just want to show you. Again, this is how you call a function. If you just see the function's name over there, you can call it with brackets. But like I said, some functions are have no arguments, and some functions have additional arguments. If you attempt to call a function that has arguments in it without 
their arguments, then you will get an error. But it will be intuitive enough for you to pick up what you've missed. So I just want to show you again. I try to run this um, this um, function, and I'm not using arguments. Look at the error that I'm getting. It says it's missing three required positional arguments: first nucleotide, second nucleotide, and DNA. So it's kind of intuitive for you to see without knowing, without having seen this function, you can kind of intuitively see how the person wrote this function by the error message that you're getting from here. So now if I'm the user trying to use this, I know that it's going to give me, and again, this is why you need to also write your arguments clearly. I would not write first nuclear. I will probably write um, first nucleotide, second nucleotide out clearly so that the user knows what is required of them as input. So here's my DNA string that I had before. Um, again, I've just stored it in this variable name so that I can, when I call it, I just call it as DNA. It's probably better to call it my DNA so that it's distinct from what the argument is. Um, and then again, I just say this is the function name. This is my first nucleotide. This is my second nucleotide, and this is my DNA string for which I want to calculate the nucleotide content for. And you will see over there that it produces um, an output. Okay. Now, again, don't be fooled by Jupyter Notebook. This is not, um, Jupyter will sometimes give you, will allow you to get away with sometimes not putting in print statements and things, but that's usually um not how other editors will work so you have to do it properly by normally uh, storing this in a variable name uh, for example uh, my nucleotide content and then you call the function over here and then normally you would have to print this okay this is best practice. This is how you should write it because, like I said, you might get away with it in here and then you go to another text editor or you work for a company or a research institution that doesn't allow you to use Jupyter and then you wonder why nothing works. It's because you've done bad practice all the time. Okay, so just remember that you should actually print it like that.